Oh, they are back in town. What a final we have got. Great Britain against Germany. Remember, this is a first to 11. It's the final. Commentary team, Jason Shaw and Phil Yates. Michael, this is one of the great sporting rivalries and it promises to be one of the great finals in the history of the World Cup of Pool. John Lehman, the referee, in the middle there. Germany on the right. Great Britain, C on the left. Yeah, Phil, I think we're in for a cracker here. Looking forward to this one and uh, I think it's going to be a close one. Lagging to break, so the cue ball closest to the bottom rail will get to break off. Great Britain wins the lag. And it's GB who win the lag just. Yeah, the lag's been pretty big in GB's games. They've started off really well, Phil. Getting themselves in a big lead, 4-5-0 in front and uh, putting a lot of pressure on their opponents straight from the first break. So they've won so many racks compared with the opposition in this tournament. So, folks, here we go. It's going to be GB to start us off here in the first rack of this fantastic final. And uh, it's going to be a yes, cracker. Sir. Nice to Rack number one, Great Britain to break. They've won 32 racks so far. GB, their opponents, 10. But that's something that didn't occur this afternoon. Yeah, Carl didn't really catch them there, 100 percent he uh, took a little bit off it and that affected the wing ball going in Joshua's pushed out and uh, I think we're gonna see Darren maybe kicking at this ball or giving it back he's give it back and I fancy Joshua to knock this in he played a very good jump shot in the second round and this year I think he's gonna nail this yep would have liked the cue ball to stay off the rail a little bit there, but you'll be happy to see the one ball go in. I think we're going to see a little containing safety here. He's going to try and clip the two ball into the eight and use the cue ball over to the other side rail. Or he's going to use the eight as a blocker and put the two ball over in the other side rail. Very nice shot there. When it comes to safeties, Righteous has not been flashy, but he's, for the most part, been effective. That's clearly his role. When needs be, slam the door. Yeah, he's been very, um, he's been very good with his safeties in the last few matches, Phil. And um, I think, like you said, that's his role in this match: try and just not take any risky, risky shots on and play the the percentage shot. Now that wasn't the best. Quite a large target to get in behind there, the, the green six and the, the brown seven. But as you can see, GB have a clear shot. Yeah, you're going to see Carl bank the two ball up to the right-hand pocket and put the cue ball behind the nine. Okay, stand by this one. And that's a very good shot there from Carl. I don't think they'll be using the jump cue here. They've got two object balls to get over. Yeah. 
Extension. Extension, please. It's a 30 second shot clock. And each team has got one 30 second extension per rack. The Germans taking theirs here. I think we're going to see a jump kick. He's going to try and come off the cushion and kick the two ball from behind and send it up towards the three ball. And cue ball back towards the four. Just like that. That was a very nice shot there. Very unfortunate for the two ball to come back out to the middle of the table and leave Team GB a shot. For me, Jason, the most important ball potted by GB this afternoon was a terrific nine ball in the first rack from Darren Appleton. This could be another pot as well yeah he's gonna have to try and spin the cue ball two rails oh he's decided to play safe and he's not got the safety correctly you'll be disappointed with that Darren you can see a little nod of the head that was not where he intended to put the cue ball or the two ball Well, we were talking about Banks not going in. That one went clean. And that's the kind of transformational player he can be, Filler. Oh, but playing with lots and lots of side. Righteous makes an elementary mistake well Phil after a nice shot from Joshua and that's a bad miss and that is not the way you want to start this match especially against team GB who have been firing in all cylinders the last couple of matches That, that what a, a nervy start this is yeah both teams look edgy at the start that was a bad miss from Darren okay. oh. so we're gonna see Joshua trying to go one rail maybe two make the four ball on the side which will be automatic position for the five he'll we'll hit that one so another tester here for his partner. And I uh, wonder how they'll be feeling, Phil, after missing the three. Well, it's a matter of fact that this is a, a tougher pot than the one he missed. Well done. That was a very good shot, especially under the pressure and... Uh, He'll be, he'll be happy with that one. Maybe settle him down a little bit. You're going to see Josh go all the way around the table here past the nine. Close to the corner. Is it going to scratch? Is it going to pull up? Oh. I'll tell you what, though. Queuing over that pocket, this is a tweaky one. Yeah, the cue ball's going towards the side pocket here. It's a, it's a little tricky shot. He's got a cue well. If he hits it too fat, it might go to the side pocket. So he's got to be careful. Well, he's cued it well, Phil, and it's looking like Germany are going to get the first rack on the ball here in this crucial final. Although that was a little sloppy from Joshua. Yeah. 
Yes. The normally dependable Darren Appleton missed quite a simple four ball to the side pocket. The Germans did the rest. As we said in the semi-finals, Great Britain did not miss a single pot, and yet in the first rack here, quite a simple one, refuses to drop. Yeah, that was a bad miss from Darren there. He uh, he won't be happy with that one. It's the first game, you know, both teams had chances there and trying to settle themselves down. And I think now after that, I think both teams will be settled a little bit and feel more comfortable out there. What a big occasion this is for Christian Reiches. The other three are all world champions. Whereas for Christian, well, it's his debut in the tournament for a start. To be involved in any kind of matchroom multi-sport event is a, a big occasion for a pool player. And now suddenly he's in the title match. Mm. Yeah, he's obviously delighted to be playing in this event. It's such a great event. Um, and, you know, he'll be, he'll be soaking all this up and even if they lose, um, he'll take all this experience and I guess he'll be moving forward in his pool career and it, it'll help him in other big situations. But they played fantastic all week and uh, they deserve to be in the final. And of course in the background there we saw, and we can still see, Pia Filler who makes this a team of three. Yeah, I think she's the coach, right? She's 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 Rocking the coach. Number two, current score is one zero in favor of Germany. Germany to break. I think that's the third the Germans have had in the tournament, and it's Christoph Reiches who delivers. I wasn't even looking at the nine ball, Phil. I was looking to see where the one ball was going. You're welcome. Well, that was just extraordinary. Joshua Filler was cheering the nine ball in as it went towards the pocket. What a bonus, what a bonus. I think it got kicked from the bottom rail, the two ball, and then the three balls kicked it in. When it comes to golden breaks in finals, I always recall Shane Van Boning, who had two golden breaks in the World Masters final against Darren Appleton. Is that an omen? Yeah, I can remember that final well, Phil. It was, um, it was all a one-sided... Um, for Shane, he made a couple of nines on the break and he played flawless as well and Darren didn't have many opportunities in that final and uh, could this be a big nine ball in the match? Rack number three, current score is 2-0 in favour of Germany, Germany to break. Not happy there, though. Yeah, he, he nearly he nearly got kicked in off in that top left corner there. And uh, I think Team GB would have been happy if that cue ball would have gone in there. So we're going to see a bank shot from here and uh, he's going to try and draw the cue ball down to the three. Missed it and he's left it a little bit tricky for Team GB. It's 
Oh, we're going to see Darren try and bank this one ball off the top rail, off the side rail, and the one ball down behind the nine and try and get the cue ball over towards the six. I think he's got them. That's a very good shot there from Darren. Joshua's going to try and kick this ball two rails, try and hit the ball half ball and come back up the table. Has he got away with it? No, he's left it. So GB um, need to take this chance here, Phil, and try and get the first rack on the board, settle themselves down a little bit. Indeed. 2-0 down in a race to 11 is no great cause for concern, but... These Germans, you can't afford to let them get away too far out of sight. Yeah, you got to cut out the mistakes and try and punish every every uh, opportunity that you can get. And. Um, this is a perfect opportunity for Team GB to get the first rack on the board. Little tricky shot here for Carl. Just get the cue ball back to the middle of the table where it is now. He's going to go two rails back to the middle of the table and leave Darren a nice shot on the seven. He's just making sure he made the ball there. Not too concerned about the cue ball as it's seven balls pretty close to the left hand corner pocket. Nice shot there from Darren. Just what the doctor ordered. Normal service is resumed, no mistakes there from the Brits. Germany, though, still have the lead. 2-1. Nine balls close to the
we have just seen a very quick conclusion to the second rack. The quickest possible conclusion, actually. Our golden break from Germany, from Christoph Reiches. But the supporting act in the German team is still 2-1 behind in terms of golden breaks, because in the very first round, Joshua Filler did this against Lithuania. He loved that, but he wasn't finished because in the quarterfinals against Denmark, guess what? The nine ball was in again. The magic of the former world champion coming to the fore with two golden breaks. Rack number four. Current score is two to one in favor of Germany. Great Britain to break. Darren Appleton starting things off in rack four. Yeah, so see Darren uh, gone back to the side he's been having a lot of success on. And uh, very solid break there. He needs a little bit of luck and he's got it. He would like this one ball to bounce a little bit. Yeah, solid break there from Darren. Good control of the cue ball. And uh, two balls down and a clear shot on the one ball. This is um this is a tricky little shot here. He's got to try and he's got to try and pinch the one ball and draw back over to the right hand side of the table where the three ball is. But he's got to cue it good. This is a tricky little shot. You really have to get into the cue ball. Extension. Extension, please. You can see Carl there. He he knows this is a little tricky shot and he's just preparing himself and make sure and it's. 100% the right shot. Yeah, yeah very nice shot there from Carl. And uh, they'll be happy with this layout to try and get themselves tied up at 2-2 here. Big bounce from that top rail there, Phil. Yeah, something that's been happening all week, although I think it has calmed down a little. Yeah, they'll be happy with that little flick there on the four ball. And... Uh, they're in prime position here to pot the four, draw over to the middle of the table and leave themselves a nice angle on the six ball. It was a nice break and a couple of nice shots there to get herself back into position. And looks like Team GB are going to take this rack and tie the score up at 2-2. Well, the last couple of racks have looked like the semi-finals and indeed the quarter-finals. GB totally play, in stroke. 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, great recovery from Great Britain off to go in two down. Nothing they could have done about Germany's golden break to go two ahead. Yeah, of course, it's always a nice feeling if you have a golden break uh, and because the tension, I think, was quite high. Uh, so it's a little bit of a comfort feeling uh, in, in the chair. I saw Cole actually turn around and roll his eyes to you at 2-0. It's like, what can I do about it? But... Yeah. He's done something about it, he's come back well. I think it was probably because of the unexpected miss from Darren uh, early in the match. Uh, but I think he recovered good from it, looking good, so it's 2-2. Really exciting, isn't it? I mean, we've, we've been so impressed with Germany this week, and Great Britain have been astonishing the last two games. So it, 
he's, we've got a, we've got a classic potential classic on our hands. Yeah, hopefully it's going to be a thriller. We certainly hope so. Thriller with filler. Two one Jim. <laughs> uh, two two. Good one. Just dotting the eyes and crossing the T's with those golden breaks. We've had four in total in the tournament. Three by Germany, the ones we've just seen, and one by Daniel Corrieri, the Italian, against Spain. So John's just going to give the balls another rack there. He, I believe he pulled the rack off a little bit quickly, moved some balls. So he's going to make sure they're nice and tight. And uh, Carl's back in his chair, just waiting on John, racking them up. So Carl's last break, he didn't hit the balls like he wanted to. It took a little bit off it, and uh, I think you'll see this one with a little bit more power on the break. Rack number five. We are currently tied at two games apiece. Great Britain to break. There, he put a lot more power into that break. Well, everything was what they wanted, apart from the fact that the, the one ball has perched itself right in the middle of that bottom rail. So there's no easy real safety here um, from this one ball. I think you might see them push out here to a better position where they can play safe from. So Phil, I was talking to Carl earlier before they went out and uh, I noticed that he had the same shoes on that at the Moscone Cup I went to get my shoes out of my Stand bag and I had brought two of the wrong shoes and I borrowed those shoes that Carl's got on and I played flawless and now he's got them on and he's Jeremy, playing flawless so maybe it's uh, this the shoes that are doing it. The lucky footwear. Well, from head to toe, in the semi-finals, he was playing like a champion. Yeah, I think the shoes um, carried on. It took took all, all my play and gave it to him. Yeah, he's. Um, I like that push out there. The, the safety wasn't easy. And, uh, I think you might see team, team GB play the one ball down the table and try and just leave the cue ball behind the two. A little it's bit of left spin. That's not good from Darren. Asking for trouble. A little containing safety here. Cue ball behind the two. Yeah, I think we're going to see the jump cue coming out. Carl's going for the short cue here. And you're going to see Carl try and jump over this ball and play the one ball, two rails to the bottom cushion and try and get the cue ball back up towards the floor a little bit. Oh, is he going to get lucky behind the two? Oh, well, well. And the object ball behind the nine for good measure. Yeah, the, the one ball nearly flew off the table there. A little tap on the table with Carl's cue there just to say he got lucky. Extension. Extension, please. Yeah, he's, he's, he's saying ha-ha there. Um, 
he knows he got lucky, but that's part of the game. You're going to try and go two rails and hit the one from behind. Nice shot there from Christian. We might see another little safety shot here from Darren. Just try and get the cue ball in behind the three and just float the one off the bottom rail. He's under hit that, he's gone the other way. Yeah, I didn't like that one, Phil. I would have just rolled the one to the bottom cushion and put the cue ball on top of the three ball there. Yes, Darren Appleton missed the four ball in the first rack. That directly led to the Germans winning it. And now, the safety error could lead to them winning this one, although maximum reach required here. Extension on the queue, stretching as far as he can. Yeah, this is easy to overcut this ball. He's kicked the four ball down the table, so he doesn't have to do much with the cue ball now. It's all pretty simple from here. So a couple of mistakes from Darren here early in the first couple of games, and it's it's cost him a couple of racks. And, uh, Team Germany look like they're going to take this rack and. Goal 3-2 in front. Yes, Germany. Regain the advantage. Two Apple, Appleton mistakes have cost GB dear. Yeah, it has, and uh, Joshua having a little word with the manager there, sending him to get him a drink, I think. John, John, who's breaking? There she goes. Push. All the Germans wanted to know there was who's breaking next. Yeah, maybe um, they just want to make sure they don't want to get the wrong partner, Phil, and end up losing out of turn. Well, so far we've had a little bit of drama work, and um, I think I think Josh will be feeling a little bit more comfortable after this. And uh, it's his break, I think. The one thing we knew pretty much about this final it wasn't going to be dominated by either side you always knew it was going to be a tightly run affair so the nine's been going in quite a lot for these two and uh favor of germany germany to break they've been breaking good also so three two to germany here and uh germany breaking Oh, that's a big scratch, and he's made three balls on the break, too. And you can see Joshua there with hand on his head. That's what happened in the very first rack of the semi-finals. Jakob Konia, he scratched into that pocket. And thereafter, GB never looked back. Yeah, this rack's not going to take too long. Everything's right there in the open. And, uh, this is what Team GB would have been liking after a couple of bad safety shots from Darren.
I'd like a little ang angle here just to draw up past the side pocket and give yourself an angle for the eight just to drop down for the nine in the left hand corner. Oh dear me, a third error from Appleton. Where's the cue ball? Where's it going? Oh, it's pulled up just enough. Extension. Extension, please. Oh, we're seeing a little bit of edginess from uh, Darren. And uh, Josh has not played the best of shots there for his partner, but he should be okay. this in the side and go off the bottom cushion into the side rail again. Just gone one rail. That's perfect. And Joshua will make this nine with ease here and take the score to 4-2. A missed four, a missed five, a badly played safety shot. All errors from Darren Appleton. And that's why Germany are in front at 4-2. It's been an eventful final so far. 
Rack 6 began with Christoph Reiches scratching, but the Brits blew it. The missed five ball from Darren Appleton was always going to be seized upon, and Joshua Filler, he doesn't miss nine balls like that. So it's 4-2 to Germany. That was a big miss, Phil, from Darren, and uh, that will only give Team Germany more confidence going forward. Break number seven. Our current score is four to two. Oh, so Phil, it's Germany. a break here. Germany in the seventh break. rack. Can you see the one ball? No, the six ball comes to the rescue. We're going to see a push out here from Christoph. You see Joshua there saying, wow, he knew. He just wanted that one ball to creep out a little bit, give them a nice, easy shot to start that rack. Push, push out. Great Britain, your option. I think we're going to see the Team GB give this back. I don't see much safety shot from here. It's very difficult. See Team GB having a good look there, and uh, I think they're going to pass this back to Team Germany. Yeah, surely no value in taking that on. Don't think they can see it full either, Phil, so they're going to have to try and clip the one ball on the left-hand side and try and bring the cue ball back down the table and try and leave distance. This is no good. That was a very, very tough push out they went to, and uh, now Team GB have an opportunity to try and get themselves back in this match. There you saw the tightrope walk that is the push out. If you make it too easy for your opponents, they're going to obviously go to the table and take advantage, but make it too tough for yourself, and that can really backfire. Attention, please. Yeah, you can see Christoph there. He's not too happy with the outcome of that shot. Oh, this is a tricky little shot here. He's got to make sure he cues it well and tries to hold the cue ball over in the right hand side. It's very easy to overhit this shot. And he's cued it beautifully. I think he just got there. I think Darren can make this ball. I think he's taking the extension here. I think the extension's already gone. Oh, he was asking Carl, wasn't he, about the extension, but you're right. Gonna spin this ball in here. Oh, nice shot there from Darren. Very nice shot. Big shot here for Carl. Um, he's going to have to try and just float this ball in here and try and get the cue ball back to where the four ball is now. So he's got to cue this one good. He's missed it. So it's all happening now. That's almost unique, a Carl Boy's miss. He's been so reliable.
Yeah, they've been gifting the last few games to Team Germany and that's not what you want to do in the final is give them a big lead because they'll only get stronger. The way he played against Kuwait, more pertinently, the way he queued against Kuwait, I didn't have any great confidence in Christoph Reiches, but as the tournament's progressed, he's become more solid. I think he's still susceptible to the odd mistake under mounting pressure, but there's no doubt he's improved with each passing match. Yeah, he, um, you know, it's always a bit edgy when you're first time playing in the World Cup of Pool, but he's been coming good in the last few matches and uh, looks like they're doing pretty well now, Phil, with a 5-2 lead over GB. Germany haven't actually had that long to prepare for this final. It's very impressive, Albin. Can they maintain that level of performance, do you think? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, I mean, they're playing pretty solid. They picked up the pieces, I think, in the little rack, in the last rack. So um, Darren is not really there where he wanted to be. It looks like a little bit the performance from the first two matches. So I hope he gets better. Weaker players is unfair, but you'd say Darren and Christoph are the ones who probably make more mistakes out of the two. But Christoph is really focused in this match. Yeah, definitely. But I think it, it's still a little bit the, the beginning of the match. So. I hope the nerves won't kick in too hard on him. So uh, I hope he, he plays as solid as it is. The beauty definitely. is as well, as well it's first yeah. to 11, so we've still got a long way to go. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they're, they're trying to, to run away now. Hope they get a few good breaks and uh, get to the hill first. OK, important break this one. Germany doing well so far in the clear. Indeed, and if they were to win this rack as well, they would be more than halfway to that 60,000 US dollar first prize. Two in favor of Germany. Germany to break. Yeah, he doesn't want to do what he did in his last break, Phil. And uh, he wants to just park that cue ball in the middle of the table. Lost again a little bit. Gonna get lucky. The four ball just creaked out the way. I think he has peek at the one ball but he doesn't have a shot that's been the prevailing expression on the faces of the Germans Phil has been doing a lot of smiling which is the definition of serious so involved, isn't he? Yeah, we have two Push different out. characters. Um, one who's, you know, really enjoys being out there and laughing and joking. Great the other one's out there. He means business. And uh, you don't see too many smiles from uh, Christoph. He's all, it means all business for him. Well, let's face it, winning the World Cup for Germany, that could be the very peak of his pool playing career. Yeah, this is uh, this is one of the biggest titles of the year, and uh, it would be something special for him to win this event. Also, we have another big event coming up next week, Phil. The World Pool Masters in Gibraltar. This team, that individual, both full of prestige. Can they get there? Yeah, it's, it's not what he wanted. He wanted to try and get the cue ball over behind the seven. And um, left Team GB with a little tricky shot here. I think Darren was just looking there to see if he could bank the one ball past the six and get the cue ball in behind the four, but I think it's a very risky shot. It could scratch if he hit, doesn't hit it too good. Extension, please. A stop up. Yeah, nice shot there from Darren Appleton. Okay. 
So we're going to see another jump shot here from Germany. Station, please. We try and jump over this and bank the one ball up towards the four and the three. Very steep on this. You're going to get lucky here, Phil. I don't think so. I think he's left it. I think this is a, an understatement, but not the the most straightforward of tables. Yeah, he has to power this one ball in here, go two rails back out to the middle of the table. That's a very good shot there. He needs it to hold up. So you're going to see Darren pot the three ball here and leave the cue ball just where the three is now and try and clip off the four and pot the eight ball in the next shot after that. This is all about where the four ball is going to land after the eight ball goes in. So I think here the best shot to play, Phil, is banking the four ball across two rails back out to the middle of the table and just make sure you make the eight. The four ball will come naturally back across. The eight thought about it, and now, ooh, not nice. Yeah, this is this is a very big shot coming up here from Darren. He needs to cue this one well and commit to it and give it a hundred percent. Oh, great shot there from Darren Appleton. The irony that was so much more difficult than the the four ball he missed to the same middle pocket in the first rack. So this was a big, big rack here for Team GB and it was a little bit tricky, but they've played some real great shots and uh, this will give them a little bit of confidence going forward. Carl's just nipped back to his chair for his extension there. You see him just screwing it on. That was more like it. The three racks that Great Britain have won have been quality stuff. It's just the the mistakes in between. Two, two, Nevertheless, Germany's lead two, trimmed two, two, to just a couple of racks. Two, two, one. Two, one, break on. This was not simple, was it, Jason? Well, that was a very good shot there from Carl, and um, I think the best shot of the rack was this four ball on the side field. It was a very, very tough shot, and he... He played it great. Worth mentioning here that GB are trying to win the World Cup for the first time. Now, we know that Appleton and Boys teamed up in 2014, but then they were representing England. So this would be a first. Yeah, they, um, they just have to try and settle down a little bit and cut out those little silly mistakes, and I think... This game will go a lot closer than you think.
as for Team Germany, well, they're trying to become only the fourth nation in this tournament's history to win the Cup on more than one occasion. Austria have won it twice. China and the Philippines have won it three times. Five to three in favour of Germany. Great Britain, so two break. They need a nice break here and a shot at the one and try and get themselves back into this match. didn't go in there it, it went high and you can see a little flick of the hand by Darren very fortunate there for that ball to go all the way around the table and drop in so they're just looking to see if they can pot this one ball and draw the cue ball back to where it is now and leave a little window between the eight and the seven for the two ball Just wants to be where he is now. We're a little bit past the head string. Oh, if he's under hit that a little bit. Attention. Attention, please. Could have played the Attention, shot please. there and then, but didn't want the, the disruption, the distraction of the beeps this isn't easy here phil he has to spin this ball in and trying to hold on the side rail for the three in the long corner he needs to get past the four he just gets there get the time clock reset please hold one second can i get the time clock reset please Oh, big shot coming up here from Carl. Got the clock this is a must-win, right? Listen for him to say five seconds. Try and get the self on a little roll and put a few racks together and get the self level here. Nice shot there. Yeah. I don't think Darren's happy with where the cue balls landed. It's very difficult to get to the six ball now because that seven ball is in the way. Do have an extension? Yes, sir. Extension, please. You said you just. You just, told us we had oh, you just told me that no, they didn't no, have an extension. No. So he needs to hit the underside of the nine. Well, and that is okay. Guys, guys. Argument here. Gentlemen. Did he shoot in time? Miscommunication between the officials huh? and GB and yeah, Germany did, did you actually say objecting. This was the extension for, for the purpose. In that case, they haven't had an extension. No, because they couldn't use the, when the clock failed, they couldn't okay. use the extension. They extension. Well, so okay. Yes, they did. Okay. okay. Yep. What has to be done? I got it. Got it. Gentlemen, I got it. They couldn't use the extension because of the clock failing, so they still had an extension to play. The extension was good. Play, please. Right. Well sorted out, John Lehman. Well sorted out. Firm, fair, accurate. Yeah, John, he's, he's pretty... Uh, he doesn't lay down. He tells you how it is, and, and that's how it is. And no, you have no extension now, guys. Yeah, so big shot coming up here from Carl. He's going to have to use the bridge. He's going to have to cut the six ball in and go up and down and try and get the cue ball back towards the middle of the table for the seven. So he needs a big bounce here. And hit the seven half ball. He's perfect. Knowing Darren Appleton, as you do, Jason, as I do, 
a little bit of aggro, you know, might just be a very good thing for him. Yeah, I think Joshua was... Uh, not sure. I think Joshua was trying to say that they'd used the shot clock and him and Darren had a little conversation. So maybe there was a little mix-up between all of them and nobody really understood how long they really had. But if he takes that as a slight, Darren, he's the kind of player who responds positively. He's no shrinking violet. Oh. It's a big rack here in this match. You know, there was a little bit of a back and forward there and everything got fixed out, so... This nine ball here for 5-4 to Germany. Yes, it is tightening up. Ben. GB loving that. Ben. We couldn't really point. ask for a okay. better final yep. than this. Incident, quality, mistakes, and Germany's lead only very slender at 5-4. Everything to play for in this race to 11 for a first prize of 60,000 mm -hmm. US dollars. Okay, gentlemen, so we have a graphics problem at the moment, okay? So this is what's going on. We have a 30-second clock over there, okay? When it gets to five, Marcel will call five seconds. That's the clock to watch. But so you know... So there's been some kind of malfunction seconds. with so the, after the break, electronic scoring and the shot clock. So down, John we'll Lehman is again for the 60. explaining to the two okay. teams that... Their five-second warning Gentlemen, will be shouted out the by the Marcel Eckhart, who okay. is the, the marker. So this is what we're going to be doing. 
when that runs yeah, down true. after they the break, when you get, get some problems seconds, we'll let, right let now, run down and then restart and another uh, thirty. Hours. Okay, it's kind of strange and, uh, situation, I would say. Five seconds when we're at five seconds. Hey, gentlemen. John, concise to the point, relaying the information as required. The timing of the timing, <laughs> leaving something to be desired. And Rob, just so I'm accurate, it's 5 4 Germany, Great Britain to break, and, and call it to break. Yep. Cold Boy is breaking off. His main priority mm -hmm. is to Five set seconds. up a run out that would okay. give Great Britain parity. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are at five to four, rack number 10. Germany is leading Great Britain to break. Yeah, lost a little bit of control of the cue ball there. Still, they got to see the two ball. So I think it's time for a nice safety here. To stay in control of the game. That was not the best effort by Darren. So I think it's jump shot time for Joshua. Yeah, it was a good effort, it was a tough one. He left the two ball in front of the pocket, but it's still awkward to play, I would say. Not that easy, because he has to get over the five ball with the cue. Very tough to play position for the four ball. Extension, please. Yeah, awkward queuing here. Very long bridge. Yeah, it was a tough one. Looks like he got away with it. when you're getting older he said he's only 38 extension please extension requested extension and forward. granted short here Christoph so um, not sure if the two ball is on you might just go for another safety here just not good enough you can see full ball so might Try to cover the cue ball behind the nine. Oh. Oh. 
this contest has got all the intensity you expect from a final. Yeah, it's a little thriller already. Yeah, good safety there from Carl. Nice speed. Tough one to hit right now for Christoph. Already taken their extension, so realizing the need for speed. I don't know why he's going for the jump cue here. He could hit it easily one rail. There was absolutely no oh. need Legal to contact. play with the jump shot, with the jump cue. Wow. Start the clock, please. In a minute or so, we could be all tied up. And now this from boys could be the key shot. I think he kind of left him in an awkward spot here. Probably wanted a little bit less angle to just play a nice little follow shot to land with the cue ball between the eight and four. Yeah, so he to go the other way around, but much tougher now. Got a straight in five ball. So the five ball, don't know why he played it that hard. Just had to come out. Approximately second diamond where the rack is. Again, came a little bit too far. Sure. If not, I'll just tough it around the back of the nine. I'll tough it off the nine. Five seconds. assume with Appleton he was concerned about underscrewing off his previous pot and in the end was overzealous. Yeah, I think it was the right decision here. Not to take any risks. Cue ball going. Wow. A little bit fortune there. It's a very small gap to land with the cue ball between the eight and the pocket. Looks like he's going for that eight ball. Very thin cut. Oh, okay. Trying to play safety, but not really landed where he wanted. So left a shot for Carl. Who can tie up the match with a, with a good shot on the eight ball. Yes. We probably knew just before him, right down the line of the shot, and from the moment he made contact with the eight, we knew it was in. Indeed, Great Britain are back on level terms. 
Great Britain back on level terms. Just going to reset a couple of things in the studio so we can talk to uh, Jason Shaw. Here. Jason, things like resetting stock clocks, it, it happens a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, just sometimes the computer just stops working or maybe the internet, what's going on. So it happens, you just got to let the referee do his job and tell you what's what. And the best referee in the business. Yeah, John, he's, he's, he tells you uh, how it is and how it's going to be, and that's the end of it. Five all, evenly poised. Did you expect it to be like that? Yeah, the finals are always a little bit tricky. The start of the game was a little bit edgy from both teams, and uh, now it's tied at 5-5, five, five, so we're in, for a, we're in for a good match. I mean, we know full well how well Great Britain have done it. It's a great story, but let's talk about Germany the whole week. You know. The, Fantastic comeback in the semis, and Joshua Filler has sort of proved why many think he's the best in the world at the moment. Yeah, obviously, he's a fantastic player. He's won many big events, and uh, no matter if he's playing doubles or singles, he's, he's very a tough opponent. If I could give you, ask for a prediction now, where do you reckon it'll go? I did say 11 5, but I don't <laughs> think it's going to be 11 5 now. I think it's going to go down to the wire 11 mm. 9, could be Hill Hill maybe. That would make um, for great viewing if it went Hill Hill. And it's always a great battle. It doesn't matter what sport we're in. Great Britain against Germany. Always a classic, isn't it? Yeah, obviously. A little bit of bad blood there. And um, they both are trying their best to win. So I think we're in for an exciting finish. Is the key between maybe Darren and Christoph, like they're not officially the vice captains, but you look at Carl as the main one, don't you? And Joshua as the main one. Does it come down to who makes the least mistakes, do you think? Yeah, you know, if your partner's struggling and you, you're expecting your partner to step up and help you, that's what doubles is all about. So I think um, both teams are working well together and um, you always need to have a leader in the team. It's funny, speaking to the Germans after their semi-final win, you know, they were quite honest. They said, look, we can't really make many, if any, mistakes against Great Britain, they saw what they did against Slovakia and the Netherlands. Quite incredible, really, because many thought the Netherlands have gone to win the World Cup, but the way Great Britain have just dis dispatched these teams the last two rounds is, is frightening. Yeah, it was pretty incredible. I think they only lost one rack in, like, 18 games. Um, so I think uh, we're in for a, a good finish here, and uh, it's going to be exciting to watch. I know it didn't go your way against Estonia, but in terms of the tournament, it, it's been a great week, and, you know, Paul... He's back with a bang. Yeah, it's nice to come back and compete and see everybody again. It's been a while and um, we've got another couple of big events coming up from Matchroom, so I'm really looking forward to it. And, you know, people forget just on a personal level for yourself and Chris Melling and others, you know, it's been a tough 18 months, hasn't it? Yeah, everybody's had it tough. Um, you know, nobody can really say they've been doing this. Everybody's been in the same boat. So I think we're all just happy that the events are on and we're starting to travel again and compete. And um, I'm really looking forward to the next few months. Yeah, give us your, give us your diary over the next few months. So after this, uh, we fly to Gibraltar for the Whirlpool Masters, another great event by Matchroom. And then back to Milton Keynes for the World Nine Ball Championships, which is going to be amazing. It really is, isn't it? And, it? and it's quite compact, isn't it? These, these three huge tournaments. So, you know, you go into it with, although you're obviously probably disappointed to have gone out when you did, but you go into a tournament with that experience that you, you've played at a top level straight away. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You know, doubles is, is, is tricky. You know, you're always playing for your partner and you're, it's not all about yourself. So when you're playing singles, you can do things differently and prepare a little bit differently. So it's going to be fun. And for those people watching for the first time it's a great sport isn't it yeah it's um it's very um tough people think it's easy but it's not it's mentally tough and um you have to be out there to see how much pressure you're under i think you fantastic players make it look easy but there's some real characters in the sport you know i mean it, the philippines going out yesterday but you know they've got they've got their own style of play a bit like brazil in the football really yeah philippines they just come out here and enjoy themselves and you know try and not put themselves under too much pressure and that's what it's all about it's about having fun and uh doing what you love and it's all about and there's the americans there do you know what isn't it incredible they are actually playing each other next week in the preliminary round of the world poor masters and to say they were angry about it is an understatement when emily fraser <laughs> the managing director of matchroom multisport walked in 
they were like, what on earth have you just done? I mean, sorry, guys, it is a live draw, you know, but, um, yeah, that's what draws are all about. It happens, though, and, um, you know, I think over the years I travelled a lot with people and we used to draw each other first round all the time, so it happens and it's, it's one match. At least one of them will be into the next round. Yeah, we'll have at least one mullet in the first round. <laughs> <laughs> um, are we good to go? Are we how we're looking here we're just getting we're nearly getting ready but yeah the um, world pool masters is back it's on next week the 2019 will be live on sky sports from next week great event and gibraltar is ready to host it tickets are available if you do live in gibraltar fans are back there but at the moment it is all about the world cup um jason obviously your fellow pros are in the arena here at the moment and it's an absolutely stunning arena, um, but there's nothing quite like fans, is there? Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's kind of strange without fans, you know. We just played the Moscone Cup in December. And there was no fans. Usually there's like 3,000 people going crazy. So it's going to be exciting when finally we can get people back in watching and, um, you know, playing in front of people and giving them what, what they love. Have you been watching... Uh, you know, snooker, they had fans back a week, a few weeks ago at the World Championship. Were you thinking, I want a bit of that, I'll come my friend back? Yeah, I was, I was happy to see the fans back at the Crucible. Um, it's, it's not the same when there's nobody watching, you don't have that same buzz or you play a good shot and nobody's clapping. So I think um, it's going to be exciting times ahead once everything calms down a little bit and we get back to normal a little bit. Looking at all those flags going past, I saw one a minute ago that the, the Belarus flag. Obviously, you played Belarus. Was it on the Monday? They were really good. Yeah, it's tough. Like um, I think I've only played one woman in my life in some tournaments, but yeah, it's tough. They, they play good and they put us under a little bit extra pressure. So yeah, they 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 definitely have a big future ahead. Both of them, Margaret there on TV. Margaret, you see yeah, next to Indiana Jones. Yeah, she's a very good player and um, yeah, they're tough tough to play against and again the beauty of this tournament is that man or woman doesn't matter it is a cue show us how good you are yeah if, listen if you can play good and cue well it doesn't matter woman or woman or guy um it just will stick with balls and pockets yeah so yeah the, i think i'm um, having the ladies in the events spices it up a little bit and if Paul continues to grow like it does and we have these three tournaments. I mean, this has been a huge success. Then we've got the Masters, then the World Pool Championship. You know, you're probably hoping down the line for maybe like a, a real proper tour like you've seen in the darts, the scene in the snooker. Yeah, I think that's the way to go is having a tour. Yeah, um, you see it in the snooker and the darts and it's very successful. And in pool, we don't really have a proper tour. We have many different tours where we're travelling all over the world. But I think if Matchroom were to put a tour together, I think that could re really bring pool to the next level. We'll have to get you a um, nickname, Jason, probably nick like, and then we've got to get you a walk-on music, all those things you've got to sort out. Yeah, I've got a nickname. Yeah. Um, I want to keep that one. I don't want to change it. Yeah. There you go. Can you disclose any music yet, or is that still still a um, work in progress? Not really. I just I just want to go out there and play. Yeah. <laughs> um, evenly poised at the moment. This game, um, it's just a proper final, though, isn't it? Great Britain and Germany. Yes. Yeah, it's, um, it's weird that the start of the week, Chris said to me before the tournament even started, he said, oh, Darren and Carl got in, and I said, oh, and he said, I think they're going to win. I said, what about us? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, so it's, it's it's a very tough final. Both teams were edgy at the start. They played a couple of, um, not shots that they wanted to, and Darren missed a couple of balls, but now it's 5-5, five, five and we're going to see some exciting pull towards the end of this match. There's Pia Filler there, um, wife of Joshua. Um, Pia, a very good player herself, but... She's been with me uh, in the studio this whole week, and I have to say, well, one, she's a joy to listen to, but two, a fantastic coach to Josh. When they go out for a break, she, she runs past me here, telling him what to do, telling him what, and he's nodding away. You know, it's, it's great to see that sort of duo. Yeah, listen, he um, obviously, he loves his wife being around. I think it helps him um, concentrate, and I think uh, when he's out there, she's just telling him to stay relaxed wait till you get your chance and you know things are going to happen what you have to do you have to be confident in this game and if you're not confident then you don't want to be out there absolutely uh, jason for now thank you very much right so it's evenly poised in this final between great britain and germany and when we come back 
play will resume. It's the World Cup of Paul final here in Milton Keynes. Sure about an extension, communicate it to the marker's desk. Yeah, that's John. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Brathen, the It should still be, yes. Okay. It's the World Cup of Pool. It is the final. And it could not be more intriguingly honest. And when are we back? Great Britain and Germany are locked together at five go. racks each. The ultimate goal is 11 racks to be crown champions. All right. Welcome back, everybody. We are now at a tie score of 5-5. Five, five. This is rack number 11, Great Britain to break. Germany were 5-2 ahead now though, it's all square. Yeah, nice little touch there from the 7 on 3 ball to get a nice position on the 1. Here you can see the seven ball just push the three ball away. Still needs a good shot there from the one to the two. Short there, a little unexpected error from 
call. Don't stop the clock again, please. Marshall, please do the clock. We only have 12 seconds at the moment. Do you want me to reset it? As you can gather, all kinds of issues with the timing mechanism. <coughs> oh. But no issues with Appleton's excellent hook. Yeah, nicely played there. Perfect speed. Almost made a two ball there. And what a shot we saw here. I think he actually could have gone two rails. But you know, Joshua is no. always ready for the exciting stuff. Extension called. Very, very good shot by Carl. It was a very tough one. Nicely controlled the cue ball there. So jump shot coming up for Christoph. The first hook from the Brits did not yield what they wanted. Maybe this one will. Extension, please. Nice little fluke there from Christoph. Well, it's one thing having luck, it's another taking advantage of it. Filler there, deliver that cue beautifully. Look at the purchase on the cue ball. Well, the fluke was decisive there, wasn't it, in rack 11? Righteous was the lucky one. 
then Fuller knocked in that beautiful pot, didn't he? And from there, they made hay. So Germany back in front at 6-5. I'll tell you what, it's good to be good, but it's better to be lucky. In all sorts of trouble, the Germans, but the two goes in fortuitously. There's nothing fortuitous about the three, mind you. And these nine balls do not go astray. And Alvin, it's amazing how many matches, how many tournaments are swayed up, turned around by a fluke. Yeah, I mean, definitely. It's a big part of nine ball, sometimes, unfortunately. But uh, we all used to it, of course, after after so many matches and tournaments we played. Sometimes even the, the luck decided the match. So, uh, OK, they got another discussion, probably. Okay, so this is what's Okay, gentlemen, we still have a This problem. is a, a stop start final, a very staccato circumstance because, again, the timing situation is not ideal, and so the other players are being told exactly what's required in terms of keeping their eye on the clock. So, a chance for a little bit of pinball. Yeah, Billy takes the opportunity. Makes a little bit of noise in there. Yeah, and I think right now it's also a little bit of a mental game. Um, because, like you said, a stop and start again. It could be quite tough to take. All of the players not involved, smiling and getting the humour from this. But I think the four players involved are absolutely desperate for things to get back to normal yeah i think it's about time i mean i think the last two racks with the break took almost like 50 minutes maybe even longer so let's see what discussion was all about Rob, can you just tell me who's breaking? Yet another small suspension in play. These two are very experienced, Appleton and Boys, so I think they'll probably be able to cope with this better than the Germans, who, particularly Christoph Reinches, wouldn't have played with a, a shot clock that often. Yeah, definitely. But I think uh, that Joshua doesn't really care about it. I think it was a little bit worried about the rack where... I'm not sure if actually the Great Britain really used two extensions uh, because that's where it all started, the issue with the shot clock. But I think uh, Joshua got already over it and he just want to hit some balls again. Am I good to go? Ben, am I good to go? John Lehman, the referee, asking the most relevant mm -hmm. question. Am I good to go, he says. That's the, the question we're all asking. Hopefully, we think so. Welcome Frustration back again. reigns. And our current score after 11 racks is 6 to 5 in favor of Germany. Germany to break. From a German perspective, the only frustrating thing about that break off was where the two finished. Yeah, a little bit lost control there. Still think he could go for a nice little safety there. Probably tries to hide the two ball behind the nine. And he did a really good job there. Maybe I said it too quickly. I think maybe Darren can see half ball so he can cover the cue ball behind the six and seven. It 
it's always tough to get any kind of a rhythm in a scotch doubles format especially in a contest as fragmentary as this because of the timing issues but I think experience will count here I really do Yeah, good shot there from Carl. It was like a two-way shot because the two ball wasn't easy. But I think he's quite straight on that five ball right now. So he needs a big stroke there. Might need to draw it back up table and go back down to play the combo for a six nine. Five seconds. Attention. Attention, Attention. please. As soon as Marcel Eckhart said five seconds left, GB took their extension. I think he could have done more with the cue ball. I think he was a little bit afraid of playing it harder and maybe missed a five ball. A big shot here for Carl. And what a shot it was. What a great combination there. The most spectacular shot of the final so far, arguably. And again, it's all tied up.
there's nothing like a good old-fashioned combination. The 6-9, in that case, pulled off by Carl Boys, and what a time to do it. It wasn't an easy one by any means. It wasn't a certainty. That's why Darren Appleton and his partner were so delighted it went in. So this is the culmination of the six-day event, the World Cup of Pool at Stadium MK. It's a race to 11, and we're still no wiser as to who will be crowned champion. Rack number 13. Current score is all tied at six games apiece. Great Britain to break. <coughs> Yeah, nice touch there from the six ball to get the cue ball back up table. Quite an open rack here. I think the four ball is possible to play into the side. Six ball into the corner. I believe it's all about the position on the four ball to have the perfect angle and then go to the six ball. It's quite tricky, I would say. Seems like he wants to leave a little bit of angle on the four ball to split up the eight and six. Oh, good shot there from Darren. Extension, please. Given that this is potentially the key shot of the rack, the Brits have been quite right to call their extension and give themselves extra thinking time. Five-year-old Darren Appleton groans as he stretches across the table. But he won't be groaning after that. Wow, what a shot there. I actually thought he would just go with the cue ball on the other side of the table. Didn't see that three-railer coming. Good shot there. Still needs one more. Good shot from Carl here. the first time okay he's missed a ball in this final already but that's the first time the key action is let him down extension extension please extension ball. in mouth the eight ball could not decide whether to drop finally to the great relief of the Germans it did and that means they've prevented GB going ahead for the first time in fact Germany regained the lead at 7-6 mm -hmm. 
Was? Godspeed. Hahaha. Godspeed, that's good, good. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Alvin, as this eight ball is going towards the, the pocket, it was touch and go. We thought when Carl Boys did that, and especially when Darren Appleton did that, GB were going to claim rack 13, but no. Boys overcutting the Brown seven ball. Christoph Reiches came so close to overcutting the eight. They are the fine tolerances between triumph and failure. Yeah, it was a very close one. I actually expected maybe to. Back number 14. Call would play the seven, seven six differently. In favor of Germany. Germany to break. But there we are. 7-6 for the Germans. And again, he lost the cue ball there. And it stayed nicely in front of the pocket. Not breaking well in the final, Christoph. to say this could be the most routine rack of this final but of course under this pressure nothing's routine yeah the three ball isn't the easiest one he did a good job there nicely stopped on the five Perfect angle to go from the four to the five. the cue ball going I think he didn't expect to hit the rail there run out assuming the nine ball goes in I just had that feeling oh no he did not deserve that when you miss a nine ball of that nature to fluke it that is Totally unreasonable. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's already second fluke by Christoph yes. in this match. And uh, was the, the jump shot many racks ago, and now the nine ball. Seems like the nurse kick in again a little bit. Because he missed it by quite a lot. And what a way to finish the rack. Well, that's almost embarrassing for the Germans and totally cruel for the Brits. Can you believe it? We talk about the unfairness of sport all the time. Pia Fuller can't believe it. <laughs> She's like one of those emojis covering the eyes. Mixed emotions from Reiches. He's delighted to go two racks ahead again for the first time since 5-3, but boy, the luck there, that was crazy. Yeah, massive rack there. 
stay in the lead. Number 15. Our current score is eight to six in and to favor stay in of control Germany. Of the match. Germany to break. And what a break we saw here. Three balls down, straight shot on the one ball. It looks like they have to go for the combo there. When you think Christoph Reinches fluked the two ball escaping a snooker to start their run out in the 11th rack and now the, the rogue nine ball. Extension, please. Extension call. Well, Carl Boy is knocked in a 6 9 combination in rack 12. Can the Germans return the compliment? Same pocket. Yeah, it's not the toughest one. And I think Josh also told him to control the cue ball to get it back up table, maybe behind the eight, if he's going to miss it. Nicely done there. Indeed, nothing fluky about that. And now there's daylight between the two teams again. It's 9-6 Germany.
If fortune favours the brave, Christoph Reinches must be a hero. That was just a gut punch for the Brits. Can you believe that? He couldn't believe it, neither could she. Although they're more than happy. And then came the 6-9 combination. And then a, a little kiss for good luck. Are they going to be kissed by success? Well, the 6-9 took them to 9-6. So that means Germany only two racks away Our current scores from nine, lifting the silverware. In favor of Germany. Yeah, Germany big advantage now. Break. Also got the break. Didn't work out well till now. Maybe we'll see a bit of better one now. So I think the only question will be if Great Britain will get another chance to start a little comeback. And another break where he lost the cue ball a little bit. One ball got kicked twice and stayed in front of the pocket. You can't ask for anything better. Is the back arm of Christoph Reichers going to hold up? If he can miss that nine ball, he can miss this. He can miss anything. Extension. Extension, please. Extension, It's way too short. Big position mistake here by Joshua. Looks like he still goes for the five ball. It's a very thin cut. Overcut it. And he got away with it. Just excuse me. Uh, I'm just going to nip into the arena to ask for the lottery numbers tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, but if someone can play the kick shot here, it's definitely Darren. Extension, please. The queue of Dan Appleton goes into the the carpet. He's mad. Who wouldn't be? hit here but 
definitely shouldn't happen. Not sure if he can still hold the cue ball there. Looks like. He was uncomfortable. It went in. Oh. Well, I think there's some kind of shot on the nine, but it's light years away from being <laughs> ideal. Yeah, just can imagine how Christoph feels right now. He's just happy that he made the eight ball. And another fluke nine ball. My, 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 my. <laughs> Jason, sure. Joshua Filler's not celebrating that, but just analyse that. I'm looking at your face, you've got something to say about it. Yeah, that's uh, it's very strange. Um, I wouldn't be celebrating that. They've, they've fluked the last two nine balls. And, um, yeah, you know, we know Joshua. Joshua's like that. And um, that just, that one will really hurt after the last one. Is that not a great bit of skill there? No, he's, he's trying to make it in this co in this side pocket. He he knows if he misses it, it's got a chance of going in the other pocket. But it's it's been crazy the last four wrecks. I suppose you need that little bit of luck sometimes though, if you're going to lift this trophy. Listen, pools like that, you know, you play good and you're playing well, and the rules go against you or for you. And uh, fortunate for them, they're going with them. Well, they're on the hill. Believe me, if you think that celebration was muted, you wait. If they actually do win it, it will be loud. I promise you. Right, Germany up on the hill. We know from past experience that luck plays a big part in nine ball pool. It's accepted. Everyone understands that. But over the last few racks, the Germans, boy, Rack number 17. <laughs> they've Current score is 10 pushed the envelope. In favor of Germany. Germany to break on the hill. The Brits just need a chance, and then they need inspiration. Shot there from Darren couldn't really do much with the one ball. I expect Joshua to go for the bank shot here. left including this one Great Britain need them all very good shot there from 
Carl, nice speed. I think he still left a little gap between the 9 and the 1. I think Christoph will be able to play 1 or maybe 2 rails. Extension, please. Thank you, Carl. Wow, legal contact. Well, I said, the Brits need a chance. But this five, is it. Yeah, got to make the best out of it. Don't write them off. We saw in the quarterfinals and indeed in the semi-finals that these two can dominate a sequence of racks. They have no leeway, but they do have renewed hope. It is 10-7. I don't know, I've lost a lot to live. Rob, who's Brent? Oh. Well, Carl there, just doing a, a spot of commentary when he's out in the arena. I think that sums up the feelings of a lot of British pool fans. It really has been a, a cruel section of the match from 6 6 to 10 6. Yeah, actually, the match went back and forward all the time. We saw two flukes on the nine, one fluke jump shot from Christoph, and golden break. So, uh, if Karma hits Germany, and maybe Great Britain will come back. And I think they got a little bit mad and fuming for the last four racks, so it could help them. I'm certainly not writing off their chances. Rack number 18, current score is 10 to 7 in favor no, of Darren Germany. Darren is a big time break fighter. Break to break. Also Carl, of course. Oh, where's the cue ball going? Breaking as good as they did in the previous matches. True, Alvin, and all the talk about luck, that's true, but they also have missed a few. Darren Appleton, four ball to the side in the first rack. Darren missed five ball in the sixth. Carl missed four ball in the seventh. And he overcut the seven ball with a chance to take the lead for the first time in rack 13. 
Yeah, they definitely made more mistakes than in the previous matches. I mean, they're still in the match. Five. Big shot here, Carl. And I think he overcut this one. He left him hooked. I think it's gonna be Joshua is gonna play the kick shot here. That's a tough one. Extension, please. Extension, call. And I believe he will hit it very hard. What a shot this was. Wow. Great kick shot there from Joshua. And the speed off the cushion just being suppressed to hold enough on the three. Is this the beginning of the end? I just hope that Filler gets nicely on the nine. <laughs> yep. Well, that's for sure the biggest nine ball Christoph ever had to pot. Came up a little bit short here. I don't think it's. I think it's not a big problem for Joshua. Just told him to move to the other side. It's all about this. Will the nerve hold? The nine ball standing between Germany and glory. What a match it has been. He's going to make that one. Without alarm, it is over. This World Cup of 2021 goes to Germany. It's been 10 years since they've captured this title. Then it was Ralph Suke and Torsten Homan in the Philippines. They beat Thailand in the final. Now Germany are on top of the world and on top of the table. Christoph Rogers and Joshua Filler.